<laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Hey, Stan. How you doing? Oh, it's way too loud. It's way too loud. All right. Hi. 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 Wait, your, so, your, light, your lighting is better than mine. It's okay. It's all good. We, we, we have the equipment, but it's all you good. You do. That's not fair. I need, I need like a big light. <laughs> um, so let me introduce you first. Um, so this is Stan, everyone. Award-winning writer Stan Zimmerman, who worked on Roseanne, Gilmore Girls, Golden Girls, used this craft to create a play titled, titled Before I Go. There we go. To help others suffering and wanting to learn how to deal with their emotions and find hope and happiness as a result. And then as well, this is Marnie. Marnie is the founder of the Achieve Project who was inspired to create the Achieve Project. And it all started in response to the DC Talkback reading of the show right before I go um, with Aaron Craig, founder of Live View Productions. So Marnie and the Achieve Project use the show as a way for prevention, mental health awareness by using holistic principles. So hi, Stan. Hi, Marnie. It's so good to have you both here. Hi. <laughs> so before I start asking questions, how do you both know each other? Do you want to go, Stan, or you want me to talk about our illustrious first meeting? Well, you start. Okay, <laughs> how did you, sure. how did you How did you hear about uh, the whole project? Do Aaron... Through Craig, Aaron, obviously. Aaron Craig, the founder of mm. uh, La Vie Productions, mm -hmm. as she knew Stan, she is, um, it holds the rights to the show. Mm. And I was talking to Aaron and I said, I want to do something big. I want to do something splashy just for my business. And yeah. she's like, oh, well, we need a place to do this show right before I go. Once we got that ball rolling, I'm like, oh, my God, I am so in. <clears throat> So on the day of the show, you come in from wherever you were flying in from. I think you were actually in New York that day. You Probably. walked through the door. The door opened. Well, there was, <laughs> there were trumpets. Yes, there were yes. trumpets. And I'm like, there I was... love that man. Uh, and uh, we kind of gelled all we day did. long through that experience. But it was the end of the show where we had our eight to ten actors. I'm not mm. sure how many we had there with live microphone, a live microphone on that we totally bonded. <laughs> really? No, I, I actually think it was um, the train ride back to New York when we were texting like frantically oh for hours just back and forth. Yes, yeah. that, was, yes. that was fun. <laughs> yes, that was absolutely really fun because it was just like yeah. instant. Since like ideas and boom, 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 boom. <clears> yeah, yeah. Yes, there was a lot of kinetic energy it going sounds on. Sounds like Marnie, it sounds like Marnie. <laughs> yes, so it does. Stan, on more of a serious note, who inspired you to write right before I go? Uh, my friend Kevin Gill, who died mm. by suicide. Uh, actually, it was May 5th, 2012. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and as a comedy writer, I didn't really know how to process all of this. And mm. um, I... Uh, what part of my jobs, we kind of, through his friends, we took different tasks and mine was to communicate mm. with anybody that had any questions. So I was having to relive it as people kept asking questions and having to explain as much as they wanted mm. to know. Uh, and then I saw there was still so much shame around this subject. Yeah, shame, so um, I was like, what can I do? What can I do? And being a theater nerd, all of a sudden I thought of the vagina monologues. Mm. And so I started collecting real suicide notes just online and wow. I would read them, but they would be so heavy. I would just copy and paste them and put them in a folder and like not want to look at them. Mm. Um, yeah. And then I got involved with the Hollywood Fringe Festival and um, was told like, mm -hmm. this is the perfect venue to explore this in a piece. Yeah. So I forced myself uh, maybe five years ago mm -hmm. and um, we did a little reading in my living room and I, I somehow figured out the arc of the piece mm -hmm. and it was a little too long, but we saw what needed to do. And I started just trimming it and we did it at the Hollywood Fringe Festival, which is actually yeah. the festival's opening this weekend in LA. Wow. So it's an, it's an anniversary of that. And it was a great way to hear it with an audience. And uh, it was very intense. And what I did learn in connection with what we're doing with the Achieve Project is a lot of my friends had kids in high school and they were a little mm. afraid to bring, bring them because of the subject matter. But yeah. what we actually found were the kids were the most receptive to it and yeah. they're not afraid to talk about it. Whereas um, people our age, like me and Marty, I think we just are mm. nervous because we don't want to tread on something. And these kids, remember, they were raised, you know, after 9-11, most of them. Yeah. And so they've been in the zone 
of, yep. you know, having to go to school when they don't know if they're going to come home from school. Yep. And um, we didn't really not have cool. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not cool. Yeah, not cool. So, uh, and just everything just more open, more open society, which I think is great to have discussion. So that's why I can't wait to get there and meet all of your wonderful you're um, team. Blown away. <laughs> yes, I am. Blown away. And how many are there? <clears throat> right now, we have seven and a couple who we are hearing about. But honestly, I'm I'm good with that. So we have room okay. for more. But and some people on the fringe mm. right now. Um, okay. And honestly, it's more of the concerns on the parent than the child mm -hmm. themselves. So I absolutely think this connection and what you just said is so important for everybody to hear. This mm -hmm. is actually um, the route to healing and to better understanding and better acceptance of what is what are their tools for their tool chest mm -hmm. to deal with stress. Um, we, we just can't understand them at where they're at. We just don't. It, it's, it's They have a different neurology at this point, a different processing system than we do. And uh, I am so excited for this blend because I actually think it's magical. And I was just talking earlier today is what is passion, mm. but it is something it is basically a desire that's so strong that you know you can see realized mm. and that's what this is for me mm. um and what do the kids know about what they're in store for you know i think they're actually really really up to speed mm. they are so excited to create a psa um, what it's like to be a teen in 2019 they are so excited to read and stand up for mm. somebody's life and they are so clear they are so clear that they want to take action and they want to put the power and choices in their own hands and in their own body. I mean, we actually did have a young lady mm -hmm. who said, I mean, I think she's 15, who said, hey, grownups, you're not going fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, and so they want to know what to do, how to be heard yeah. without being dramatic, uh, no mm -hmm. pun intended. And they want to be strong to be understood, and they really want to settle their, their themselves down at the same time as while, while this is happening. So I think they know exactly what's in store. So for both of you, what does it mean to be seen and heard in today's society, especially for teens, especially since it's so fast paced, we have social media, we have, can be connected at any time of day. Um, how would you answer that question, Stan? I love it. I know there's a lot of people. I also teach actors and I have mm -hmm. many students that are afraid of social media. Can, yeah. And they say, well, I don't want to have to post every food that I eat. And I said, you don't yeah. have to post your dinner. <laughs> um, so but it's just a really funny part. <laughs> but you can create it and make it whatever you want. Yeah. And I have met so many great people just on social media. I've gotten jobs through social media. Um, mm. it, it, with a subject like this, it connects us all. Yes. And mm. so many people, just when we did the play in the Hollywood Fringe Festival, people would contact me that I don't know, or maybe I'd gone to camp or high school with years ago, and said how they were connected to my piece, whether they had thought about it or mm. survived it, or they had mm. family members that had. And so it just brings us all together. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I embrace social media and, um, mm. you know, there's a, there's a way to attack it yeah. and not be, t not be too annoying. <laughs> you know, I don't like to do more than one or two posts a day. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> in the comments. Huh. Yeah. Uh that, that was Jane Sibbett, by the way, who was popping oh, we in. Love was Jane. Of... We love Jane. Oh, Jane, Jane, we're not Wait, how, with you yet. How we're do, not I, with you. How do I don't I know. It? It? I think you oh, can. I see. Jane, Tim we're not, we're going to bring you in from LA too. Don't worry. We're not done. Um, but I have a question. Did you ask me Hi, darling. how do kids be seen and not heard? Yes. Okay. Uh, I wanted to answer that because I think that's really key. Yes. I, I went goes back to the shaming. These mm. kids may not have the right words to explain why they're feeling what they're feeling. Mm. So giving them a safe space and opportunity yeah. to express themselves and have an adult kind of sift through that and really energetically pick on pick mm. up on. How oh, wait, works. we're being watched in Germany. Hi, Germany. We're being watched in Germany. Cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, that's goodbye. Let's not do that. Uh, uh, hmm. So they want to be seen. They want to mm. be heard. They want to not feel shame. They want to mm. have an opportunity to get their point across. And we as adults help them go mm. through those uh, rabbit holes or that those pathways to find out really what is the source of what they're feeling. Um, but the more they get a chance to express themselves, the more they feel empowered with that. And, and can you explain a little bit about, um, so all these students, they're not paying to be involved in this 
two-week camp. They're all scholars, No, they're not. Correct? Yeah. yeah, they are. And why they did are. you do uh, that? Because I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> because someone actually, this wonderful woman, I was basically saying if I could have people just help me along with this, mm. and uh, here's how much I think it would cost. And a woman actually posted on Facebook saying this is so important that my budget, my magic angel that I was looking for just to get us kickstarted said, hey, that's really only 10 parents. If we mm. each paid for one student, that's only mm. 10 people. And this is so important. Let's do that. And my, you know me, I, I, I jump off the bridge first and then mm -hmm. figure out hope there's water in a pair or a parachute afterwards. Um, I'm just action, action, action. The more I thought about it, it just felt right. Mm -hmm. And the more mm -hmm. I really put my mind and where my heart was and where they aligned, I'm just like, mm -hmm. this project's so important. I don't want them to feel like it's camp. I don't want to feel like they paid to play. What I want them to feel is we are 100% mm -hmm. in it for them. And there is no price tag for mm. your life. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to, I'm getting emotional. I just mm -hmm. wanted to stand up for them and say, mm -hmm. I want you here so bad. I don't want yeah. your parents, the pocketbook to get in the way. That, you know, just like last and, and, year. Just like last and, and I got, year. And I theater, ca theater camp for me really changed my life. Yes, it did. Uh, having mm -hmm. uh, been bullied um, yeah, in me too. seventh, eighth grade and younger even, um, but when I went to theater camp, suddenly I was popular and people got me mm -hmm. and I found, found my tribe. So to be able to do this with teens and have them have such mm. this, an intense experience is going to be great. And they're not only going to be working on the play with me, and this will be a slightly newer draft, which you'll be getting soon, Marnie. Oh, oh good. Um, okay. Uh, we, I tweaked the ending a little bit uh, from the reading we did in New York. Um, so they'll be working on a new script with me as a writer, but also they'll be, I'm acting in it. Yeah. So through the process, when we originally did the play, it was all just suicide notes and facts. Mm. And then, uh, Michael Wilson, this wonderful Broadway director, um, uh, in, uh, suggested that we add a narrator character <laughs> and that was based on me. And the more we keep mm. doing it, the more everyone is saying, I have to kind of open my heart and put it out there, which is very difficult, yeah. but in a way it's, it's helping me still process with my friend Kevin's death. Mm, yeah. um, so um, I was an acting student and then got into writing and mm -hmm. doing all those crazy TV shows and movies. And um, it's interesting now to have another of my full circle moments to be yeah. acting in a play uh, with kids. Uh, I have done it a few other times and uh, it's, it's pretty intense. We did it in Claremont, California with uh, students, faculty, and school board members. That, see, over, that is over, so... Over 20, over 20 of them, yes. Yeah, a school board and, member. Yes, uh, and they really wanted and needed to talk about this subject, especially the yeah. parents afterwards. Um, and we had some health professionals involved with the talk back after. Mm. Yeah, they didn't care about me in Hollywood. They wanted to talk about this, which, <laughs> which well, is okay. Yes, I mean you're cool. I'll and save all. it for the. I'll save it for the book. Yes. So actually, there's a, a consistent question that keeps showing up, and so I want to address that, and I will tag you in. So if it's okay, I'm just going to jump mm. in and say it. Yeah. Uh, people yeah. want to know what's going to happen in camp, and how are we going to end up then with a gigantic show at the end? And I'm going to quickly just fill you in. It's two weeks with the students. The students are the participants mm -hmm. are um, people who showed up yeah. in my world are heard about this through somebody where somebody said this is a good fit for them they're very expressive they really want to make their voice known mm -hmm. uh they might have some issues with anxiety which is um, like everybody uh so these are really typical your every everyday kids everyday kids we got a couple kids who are having mm -hmm. some real social anxieties we're bringing them in we're mixing them all together and what we're doing is we're learning a particular acting style that is fully living in the energetic body, mm. taking the intellectual sense of acting out of it. Um, and it's fully, fully built on the backbone of the four agreements mm. um, by Ruiz, which is truly being impeccable with your word, really not taking things mm. personally. So yeah. it absolutely works with how they live in their everyday life. And what we found out, and so we'll have plenty of time to put this on its feet and give the kids a lot of time to have experience in this project and process and application of how we are going to use this as an acting skill. What we, we found out by t test piloting, piloting it is that these kids were actually working through their own stuff. Yeah. 
They were working yeah. through their own stuff. Their real life was showing up in yeah. all the material. And what I recognized intuitively right off the bat is that when we get kids up on their feet, primed to go, mm -hmm. more aware of their bodies, more aware of themselves, they're going to handle the right before I go material a little bit disconnected mm -hmm. and a little bit more organically. And I just think as the audience, this is just going to blow our minds because the mm -hmm. only thing that shows up on the actor is how the actor feels about what they've said, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. in exchange with the people who are next to them. Mm -hmm. So we're learning the process for a full week. But then during those two weeks, every afternoon, the afternoon outbreak, um, outbreak, <laughs> breakout <laughs> session <laughs> is, um, well, but there better be no outbreak. So, uh, the breakout session is high level. Just speech, acne, so. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Just a, there might be a little yeah, acne. Yeah, yeah, there might yeah. be a little probably, sweat. Probably mine. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the four agreements. Um, it could be mine too. Um, is we're having people coming in from uh, all walks mm. and all different modalities of um, we're having two authenticity coaches. We have an ex NFL football player mm. who is now a performance mindset coach. Mm. Uh, we're having a nutritionist who is a PhD. Um, we're having somebody come in who is truly one of the highest level fundraisers for non for profit in Maryland mm. to teach them is how to commit your heart to something wow. you love. So it's a really yeah. full, really breathed out program. And then they're creating a PSA nice. and we are going to see the benefits of that. And then we work on the show. Mm -hmm. So they'll have a week every afternoon, every afternoon mm -hmm. in that second week, they'll be working on the text, but it is, you, well, you wrote it. Um, yeah. it's, they can read it and deliver it. Right. So it's a yeah, really- Yeah, so it's all read. It's yep. not memorized. So it's just read at music stands or however, if you have enough music stands. And so do you envision taking this project to other cities? It's my fantasy. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I have it. I'm, you know, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're sure of something, and then you wake up the next night and you're even more sure of something. Mm -hmm. I think it is, there's so much potential there because within this two weeks, whether it happens in two weeks or it happens over eight weeks, a little bit slower is we are preparing them to be the messenger mm -hmm. for themselves, their own advocate of a bigger mm -hmm. message. So we're not holding up uh, what I say, we're not looking back in time, we're looking ahead in time mm -hmm. and really kind of playing in that quantum space. So yes, I, it is a fantasy of mine for it to kind of be partnered together. Not that your show couldn't have multiple lives and multiple mm -hmm. commercial places, but if there is a real therapeutic, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A real, th see? Component. Component, component. component. Yeah. Uh, therapeutic component. I see this being really functional. And um... uh, uh, someone's asking, yes, it's in Bethesda, Maryland. Yes. And uh, yes. someone is also asking, well, we have a therapist on hand. Yes. 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 We have therapists. Um, so yes, we have absolutely okay. therapists on hand and we have trained kid professionals. We are really doing a 360 experience yeah. here. Yeah. Yes, so we've we thought of a lot. Now, Marnie and Sian, what is just one thing you wish for kids to just one thing to take out from this experience? If you could just label one thing for, for parents to understand this a little bit better and for the kids to really grasp on kind of before going into the camp, knowing what, what's to be expected. Well, that's a big one. Uh, it's kind of thematic in the play, but um, living for what's around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, I think as a teen and really any age, uh, you can get really caught up in the minutia of the moment mm -hmm. and feeling like you can't get out of it. And uh, I'm, I feel everything in the moment, but realize that there is life around the corner and mm -hmm. you don't know what that life is. And we talk about that in the play. So live for what's around the corner. And for me, that's so exciting because that's what gets me out of bed at an ungodly hour every day. With <laughs> these, and Marty will know she'll see me online. It's, yeah, too early. Yeah, um, really early. <laughs> really early. But, uh, you know, when inspiration hits um, and mm -hmm. I... Uh, very, to me, it's exciting because I don't know what's going to happen that day, and I'm just excited to create it and open my heart and my mind to see what's there. Mm -hmm. And if you trust that, it will it will lead you into miraculous places and to meet wonderful people like Marnie. That's beautiful. 
Okay. Um, thank you. And I was just saying, as you were saying that your li- your eyes were really lit up and that's yeah. what better I Better lighting, right? Better lighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what I want <laughs> the kids to meet with you is that like you're ridiculously funny yeah. and inspired by them and you easily get moved too. And that inspires you. Well, at least that's how it looks from the outside. <laughs> I shouldn't assume that's one of the agreements. Mm-hmm. Um, but ha- answering the same question, yes. you can't, you actually really put the nail on the head is for mm-hmm. them to see power in their action mm-hmm. and that all of the ugly stuff that's, you know, going on in the world that says they don't have a future. We don't know that. Mm-hmm. And that if they keep telling themselves that they do, they have a bigger future. So I want to tell the parents, we have to approach our children differently mm. than we have been to have a different outcome. And they are saying, they are saying. Yes, they're begging us. They're when begging you see it. The, when you see those wonderful kids at Parkland, and yeah. what, they so inspire me and give me hope yeah. because they grabbed an awful experience and they've turned it into action. And yeah. I, I just feel we all need to mm. uh, learn from them and do that and, and that's what gets me going and why I feel like every weekend that we don't do this play, I'm like, you know, I know Aaron's probably sick of me. Like, come on, Sylvia, <laughs> I want to do it. Because every, like, every, it's a missed weekend. Every community that I just, I meet new people and I love meeting new people. And then when I hear their stories and how touched they are and how we connect with our stories and it, yeah. it, it, um, it's, it's pretty powerful. And sometimes I wonder whether I have big enough shoulders for it. You do. But, mm. um, like someone said to me, um, this wonderful woman, Diane Orley, who's been involved in the piece, and she had lost a son to suicide. And she said to me, nobody, none of us asked to be a part of this um, mm. subject, but it comes to us and, you know, then it becomes our, what do we do with it? And so we have a calling now. Stan, you just reminded me mm. of a very important moment that happened last year, which really was the incidental moment for me Mm. it didn't happen during the talk back it happened in the social hour after the talk back Mm. the grandmother of uh the one from orange wednesday Mm -hmm. what she said was so she was the grandmother of the son of the boy the mother's family having a good sense that this was going to happen felt that she did not have a tribe to connect Mm. with when she was going through the, my son's in trouble. And to Mm. me, I feel like this takes the conversation three years prior to any real trouble. This Mm. is us having real conversation of we need to be aware of all of our babies and we need to give them all of the right information. And that people who are faced with real trauma with their kids or their loved ones, because this isn't just kids, any age mm. can do something, but we're concentrating on the kids, is that we're kind of lightening the bar and making them feel a little bit more comfortable with having these conversations. So it was that moment, and thank you for reminding me that. It's the people who've really been through it are the ones who are speaking up the loudest. Mm. And we and, want people and, to sp- speak up, yes. Um, and to Michael Wilson's credit, um, yeah. he... I think one of the reasons why he wanted to bring a narrator and me character into it, and we've had other actors play it besides me, but um, he said, when I tell my story of my friend Kevin, obviously it's in my point of view mm-hmm. and my perspective, there is humor and there's so much love, and mm-hmm. he wanted that to be infused in the piece, and that's what is so exciting. And thank you, Scott. And you know, people are asking, like, can they see the piece? And well, the, the ultimate goal is to get it published and like vagina monologues, it can be done anywhere all over the world mm-hmm. and different communities can mm-hmm. take the play once it's published and interpret it and we can touch so many people that way. So yeah. we're just at the be, you know, not at the beginning, but we're, we're chugging along in the process of this and we're getting very, very close to having the script the way we want it. Uh, but if there's any other people or communities that would like us to bring the piece to them, we would love to. Uh, so you can contact uh, me on the, every social media or uh, <laughs> right before I go. Mm. Uh, we we would love to you know bring it to you and and uh, have you help us as we as we continue our process. That's awesome. And, yeah. keep, and keeping it alive, I keep using Absolutely. those terms because it's it is important and um, yeah. you know that's what gets me through it. Even when I get very mm-hmm. emotional reading my part and talking and thinking of my friend Kevin and, yeah. and that, um, 
you know, his legacy and he came to every one of my plays and mm -hmm. he comes to this one every time I do it too. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's still very present through your life. That's beautiful. And it's kind of shocking sometimes yeah. because I keep thinking, all right, I've got this figured out. And then it comes like a wave. And I'm sure many people can relate to that. You know, if they've had any kind of loss in their life. And, mm -hmm. um, but I think to me, it's, it's not sad, sad, because it's like, no, it's his love and energy mm. that is still with me. And Absolutely. That is, so, that is so powerful. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I kind of almost never want him to go away. I just want him to be here mm. and here and, um, and then to share him with, with everybody. That's beautiful. I think that's so, uh, so right. So right. So Stan, I know your time is very limited. Is there any closing remarks on either of your parts, Marnie, Stan, that you would want the audience to take, take from? Uh, if there's anybody out there that would want to get involved or help sponsor a, mm -hmm. another team that could be a part of this amazing event that we're going to have. And we're also going to do some fun stuff, too, oh, uh, yes. besides this. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of my uh, – I teach a, a sitcom audition workshop in L.A. and also New mm -hmm. York as well. Um, so I'm bringing a, a little – piece of uh, uh, Amazon pilot that I wrote for teens mm. and we're going to work on uh, auditions with kids. Um, mm. So we're going to take a morning and do that. Oh, I just gonna... assigned myself to be the reader. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I have something to do. I just thought of that. And so it's really <laughs> great that these kids are going to get to have an experience. And I'm really pretty much, I think the only one teaching audition workshops from the writer, producer, showrunner mm. perspective. And also because I wrote the material. Um, so I'm looking forward to just you know playing with with these uh young actors and then yeah. showing them you know what it's like to audition you know hollywood style so to speak <laughs> so that that's gonna be pretty cool too awesome what about you marnie um i just want to say that uh i'm kind of blown away by how mm -hmm. this has unfolded and how quickly it has come about to where it is something bigger than i initially mm -hmm. intended it to be and always what i dreamed it to be so uh, a link will come up because honestly, this is not going to be done at the end of the second week. We're not going to take our bows and read our little letters and be done. We're just going to forge out into the world and we need energy. So I think mm. most of us recognize that we all need a village to create a give life to this project. Mm. So I'm asking to know who my tribe is. Um, mm. So the chief project needs um some donations, mm -hmm. some paper, yeah. a yeah. bagel, a, yeah, a pair of scissors. <laughs> I don't know what you said, but scissors are good. Coffee uh, for me. Yeah. Coffee. Yeah. Uh, an up. audience. Okay. Come see the show. because yes, what these, come see you. What, And how much are tickets? It's only $15 for the ticket. Uh, it's not recommended for kids under 10. But if you know somebody in the area, in the Bethesda area, that uh, either could help us realize some of these uh, dreams and or mm. just be moved by the show and find their tribe. Mm. Uh, we'll put that on. We'll put it in the comments in a minute. I have someone behind us on a computer right now. Uh, and my dog is clawing out a door as we speak. <laughs> okay. um, but lastly, is if there's another community that wants to do right before I go or wants to understand more about the Achieve mm. Project, um, please reach out to us. I mean, we're both incredibly accessible. Mm. And Aaron Craig okay. is incredibly accessible. And yes, we're going to tape it. And we'll see what we can. We'll see how yes. legally. Your community. And well, we can you... show. Right. Yes, yes, we can show the before can... and the after you can become involved uh, with it and actually be a part of the play and a part of the process. And we uh, need your feedback yeah. and, and encourage it. So if you can stay after and yeah. have some wine with us and talk, uh, we'd love Definitely. to hear it. Yeah. So we are going to have a big talk back. We'll have therapists. Uh, well, but I want people in the community. So if you mm. are a coach, if you are a sports mm. team person, if you are a therapist, if you are mm. a police officer, if you are a fireman, if you are a politician, please mm. come because that will be an incredible, incredible conversation to have with me and Stan, right, Stan? Right. I think Aaron's maybe, coming. maybe uh, we could even do the talk back on Facebook Live. That could be interesting. That we could do. Yeah. That we can do. That would be legal. We could do that. Okay. Yes. We want to stay legal. <laughs> we want to be legal because, you know, yes, I walk the fine do. line. Yes. Yes, you do. Disruptor. Disruptor. <laughs> I don't want to uh, have to bail you out while I'm in D.C. Yes. No, we both have to pay. Our, no, please don't. Please. <laughs> okay. uh, my, my dad will be there. No, just kidding. Okay. Uh, I just want to tell you I love you. I love you, too. And I'm going to see you in the Really soon. Weeks. Yeah, really soon. Really yeah. soon. Really soon. Yes.
Awesome. Uh, thank you, Claudia, for watching thank in Germany. You. Help us thank get you, Claudia. To Germany, yes. And, and all. I, I see Scott, who's a producer in New York. We'd love you to get involved and, and mm. help us, you know, get this, you know, off Broadway, Broadway, wherever. Uh, we That'd do want to. Cool. Yeah, mm. be, it needs to be in New York soon. Oh, my God. Marnie just <laughs> had an idea. I'll tell you later. It's okay. All went, right. <laughs> she had one of her ideas. Uh oh, train rides are necessary. <laughs> Thank you, I Claudia. I've been on all day now that I've got this lighting right, but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll wish you, you <laughs> Thank know, the you best. Thank you, both. And I'll see you soon. All right, both. we'll all okay. get together. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Danielle. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.